probably full by this time of day. Hmm? They're probably full by this time of day. But let's see. Yeah, I'll get some turtle food. Come on. <laughs> Come on. The log, look at all the turtles over there. Okay. Move down about three feet. Now look, look at the log. Look at all the turtles. Do you see them? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right there, see him? Where? Right there. Where? Right in front of me, with my finger. Emerald tree monitor. Tom, do you want to ride? Okay, 18 feet. 
Heaviest snake, 200 pounds.
are able to see where they're going. She uses her nose in the same way. But this little lady here is the newest hair that we have on exhibit. She's only been down here for about two years now. And she is only about 12 years old. So she's still very, very young compared to these haters as well. She is a little over seven feet long, a little over 200, or sorry, a little over 100 pounds. So she's still very, very small compared to these two. On this side of the exhibit, the smaller of the two normal colored gators is our other girl, and that is Adrian. She's actually the oldest gator in this pit and the longest resident here. So she is 37 years old. She is eight and a half feet long and about 250 pounds. I know I said that she's the oldest, and you might be thinking, well, why is this guy here so much bigger? He is actually five years younger than her, but as you can tell, he is a lot bigger than her. That's because the boys are always bigger than the girls once they do the age and go in size. So this guy here, even though he's five years younger, is 11 and a half feet long and about 650 pounds. The reason he's so much bigger is the boys are the ones defending their territory and their ladies. So he wants to be as big and bad as possible to fight off any other boy leaders that want to come in and try and take that territory from them. Rocky here is actually very lucky to be in captivity because he is surprisingly still quite small compared to an adult male size here. So he would have some difficulty out in the wild because he would typically lose to other male leaders that would want to come in and take this territory from him because adult leaders tend to be about 13 feet and 800 pounds. He's quite small in comparison. Lucky to be here and work to have them. So when we do our feeding with them, we do several different uh, physical and also verbal commands. So you will see us moving our hands around. They see that and they know what to do. They'll also hear our commands given to them through our voices. This uh, surface over here actually relies mostly on the sound of our voices, just as I said, she doesn't have the greatest eyesight. But we're going to be focusing on feeding these two over here. They know several different commands, even though they have brains the size of a peanut, they are able to learn the single commands just like a dog can. So they do know several, such as to get in the water, which you'll see they already are, because they know they only get cut in the water. Sometimes you will need to tap them back in, though, because they do like to try and cheat and put one of their legs up on land. So you will kind of just tap their feet until they go back in the water. A couple other commands you'll see is come means to swim over to us, Open means open your mouth, and potentially station means to stay where you are. We do this feeding with them every time just to keep it fresh in their memory so they don't forget, because as I said, they do have great size of peanut, so we do want to use this every single time. If they don't listen to us, though, we will not be able to feed them because we cannot reward that bad behavior, because then they'll just think that they never have to listen to us. So it is very important that you do remain very, very quiet through this show, because if they can't hear us, you guys are not going to be able to see them eat, I'm sure. Everybody would be very disappointed with that. And we would have to come in and eat them later on with nobody else is around. So we definitely remain as quiet as possible. Another thing that's very important is to not ever do what we are doing unless you are trained. So we are trained to work with these leaders, and these leaders are trained to do work with us. So we definitely don't want to go out into the wild and try and tell a gator to come up to you. Because, what are you going to do with that gator actually does? I'm sure you don't have their food just hiding out in your back pocket. So don't repeat anything that you see us doing here. And the most important rule for this gator feeding is anything that you want to return home with, leave it off of the legend. Because if anything falls into the gator pit while we're doing this feeding, they are in food mode and they are going to get to it a lot faster than either of us will. And also, I'm not going to get my hair wet. So, everything off of those ledges. This includes purses, water bottles, and most important, children, if you would like to preserve home So, we're going to go ahead and get started with the feeding. I'm going to start off by feeding Rocky while Melissa here keeps Adrian at bay. Then we will switch and go back and forth so that they each eat for twice. They're getting nice and delicious grass today. As you can see, Rocky is very, very excited. Rocky water. Here we go. Rocky open. Here we go. All right, now we'll feed Miss Adrian over here. As I said, Adrian is the longest living resident in this exhibit, so she likes to think that 
that she owns the place and can do whatever she wants, so she's usually the one that we have the most difficulty with following the rules. Nope. Just like that. Adrian Water. Adrian Water. No cheating. You can get all grumpy with me, that's fine. Get in the water, girl. All your little toesies. All of them. Come on. Adrian Water. Adrian. Come on, girl. Go. Adrian Water. Triceratops right behind you. Just stand still. But I'm gonna get the picture of the triceratops right behind you. Just stand still.